Today we have brought you a bunch of updates. Tesla Model Y Standard Range may return to the US soon. Tesla's 4680 battery cell pilot production line hit 70 to 80 percent yield. And Tesla diagnostic software now available for purchase in the US. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. Tesla appears to be undergoing a major overhaul of its battery approach in the US, with another chemistry and form factor in the equation. The situation was simple before, as the company was using in Fremont, 1865-type cylindrical cells, in the Model S and X imported from Japan, and 2170-type cylindrical cells, in the Model 3 and Y, supplied from the Tesla Gigafactory in Nevada. Both types were Panasonic's NCA chemistry. New 4680-type cylindrical cells are under development by Tesla, but not yet ready for volume production. And there is the fourth type, prismatic LFP, lithium iron phosphate cells, supplied by CATL from China. We think that Tesla's shift towards LFP is going to make a huge difference. We recently shared updates about the Model 3 Standard Range Plus, coming from Fremont, Tesla just introduced the LFP lithium iron phosphate battery option for the entry level Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Tesla has seen skyrocketing demand for its Model 3 and Ys this year. Most of the configurations are sold out for 2021, which means a long wait times for Tesla buyers. To overcome this issue, Tesla recently surprised everyone with its new plans on Model 3 Standard Range Plus variant. With the LFP battery pack now coming in the US market, it looks like a beginning of major switch of all entry-level versions of all Tesla cars to the LFP chemistry. But, there's still something that's not yet announced from Tesla, and it's regarding the Model Y. Not only the Model 3, but also the Model Y has a long waiting list. So what about the Model Y? According to recent rumors, soon we will see in the US the reintroduction of the Tesla Model Y standard range version. Tesla introduced the LFP-powered Model Y standard range version in China, and we think Tesla might do the same in the US. The NCA-powered Model Y standard range was cancelled previously due to insufficient range, in Tesla's CEO Elon Musk opinion. It could cover an EPA-estimated range of around 244 miles, which means that anything new have to be better, at least about 250 miles of range. Tesla most recently launched the Model Y standard range with LFP battery in China. The export of this version to Europe might be just a matter of time. We assume that many customers would be also interested in a more affordable, entry-level Tesla Model Y in North America, and the use of LFP batteries would be a perfect opportunity. Some suggest that the LFP-powered Tesla Model Y standard range will be available from Q4 2021. The standard range version could make the Model Y much more affordable, probably closer to $45,000. Moving to the next update, Tesla's 4680 battery cell pilot production line hit 70 to 80 percent yield, according to reports. Tesla has a number of programs that have the potential to change markets, and one of these is arguably the 4680 cells. Created using a dry electrode process and optimized for price and efficiency, the 4680 batteries could very well be the key to Tesla's possible invasion of the mainstream auto and energy market. If Tesla pulls off its 4680 production ramp, its place at the summit of the sustainable energy market would be all but insured. Unfortunately, Tesla's publicly disclosed target for the 4680 cells production ramp appears to have been made on Elon time. This means that during battery day last year, Tesla's target of hitting a capacity of 10 gigawatt hour by late September 2021 included some optimistic assumptions. Similar to other projects, like Elon Musk's alien dreadnought factory, however, the pilot production of the 4680 cells have met some challenges. Tesla admitted to these difficulties during the Q2 2021 earnings call when Elon Musk explained that one of the main challenges in the 4680 cell production ramp 
was related to the battery's calendering, or the process, when the dry cathode material is squashed to a particular height. Partly due to the use of nickel in the 4680 cells, which are extremely hard, some of the calendar rolls end up being dented. A Tesla investor, familiar with the matter, recently shared some details, suggesting that Tesla may have hit some breakthroughs with the production of the 4680 cells. As per the Tesla investor, the production yield of the 4680 cells has reportedly risen to about 70 to 80 percent, up from just about 20 percent last year. This means that a decreasing portion of the 4680 cells produced today are seeing issues, and Tesla's pilot battery line at Cato Road is starting to close in on the acceptable yields of factories like Giga Nevada. While the delays in the 4680 cells appear to have affected the rollout of products like the Cybertruck and the Semi, it is starting to become evident that Tesla is about to hit some respectable battery output from its pilot line in California. Fortunately, the company has already initiated some contingencies that address the 4680 cells delays. The production of the Model Y in Giga Berlin and Giga Texas would be launched with 2170 battery packs, for example, at least until the 4680 cells are available. Moving to the next update, Tesla's diagnostic software, now available for purchase in the US. Tesla quietly debuted a set of service subscriptions that could help owners work on their own vehicles. The service subscriptions could pave the way for Tesla to allow owners to repair their own cars. Tesla offers two service subscription packages. The first subscription is the Service and Repair Information Package, which gives owners access to manuals, tooling catalogs, wiring diagrams, and other pertinent documents. Owners had access to these documents previously, according to Tesla owner and hacker, Green the Only. The second, newer subscription gives Tesla owners access to the company's diagnostic software. Green noted that Tesla's diagnostic software was not available for US owners until now, but it was already available to owners in Europe. In December 2020, Tesla gave European owners access to their vehicle's toolbox feature, granting them access to diagnostics and some software. Tesla offering these service subscriptions hints that the company may be opening up to owners repairing their own vehicles. Giving European owners access to the toolbox may have been a trial run for the US release of the service subscriptions. A couple of weeks ago, a few drivers who own Teslas with salvage titles reported regaining access to the supercharger network. Unfortunately, the supercharger access did not last. This suggested that Tesla may have either restored supercharger access to salvage cars by mistake, or the brief access to the rapid chargers was simply the company testing the waters. Blocking salvage Teslas that are already repaired from the supercharger network is bad optics, after all, especially if non-Tesla EVs, under varying degrees of wear and tear are allowed to access the rapid charging network. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.